house, uh, we start off on the one hand slowly. On the developer side, we have to start off pretty quickly because of the kind of things that were put in place uh, by Simon and his efforts. So, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you coming tonight. We're going to stop now and we're going to have some, and you have to be brief. Uh, I use it most of the time, but you take me brief to tell us what your memory to us for the 60s and 70s that we haven't talked about already. So, um, in 1968, I was 11 years old, and my family moved to a house directly across from Money's Corner, just outside of Reston. Okay. And at that time, um, Route 7 from Tyson's Corner, you had the sign up to, for the left turn. To Route 7 was a two-lane road all the way to Tyson's Corner. And Boyer's Road was a dirt road between about where um, uh, Twin Branches is, and there was no bridge across um, Difficult Run. If you wanted to go to Vienna, you had to drive your car through the stream in order to get there. I still do that. I lived in Hungary at that time, and I remember Boyle talking about you wanted to go into Vienna. You went out Lawyer's Road, and Lawyer's Road had a, this was crossed by the Difficult Run stream, no bridge, and if the water wasn't too high, you just went out through the car and went away. Never got pretty deep. Who else? Who else got anything you want to join? Yes, sir. Uh, my, my wife and I moved here from Chicago. We came. We were recommended to uh, talk to a realtor in McLean. And we came here the day before. My brother-in-law was a developer of commercial in, in uh, Maryland. He, he'd heard of Reston. He said it was a, somewhere he ever heard. He'd never been here. Ironically, he made his fortune here later. But and that's another story. But anyway, so we came out here, we saw the lake, we saw the houses, we saw the trails, we saw uh, a Ryland home at the Gettysburg for my life. My labor became a teacher at Gettysburg College. But anyway, so we fell in love with it. So we went over the next day to this realtor, McLean. We're sitting there, and he's telling us uh, about uh, the difference between a mortgage and a trust or something. And I said, you know, yesterday we were out in Weston, and kind of like what we saw, and he said, Reston? <laughs> no, no, no. You don't want to go to Reston. <laughs> I said, why? What's wrong? He said, you know who lives in Reston? I said, no. He said, liberals. <laughs> <laughs> liberals live there. And I said, really? And he said, uh, you know, not the regular old liberal. He said, people, they go down to Washington, and they march, and they burn drug cards, and they make trouble. And so we came out the next day and bought the house. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good story. And it was part of the startup problem with Preston in terms of selling it was it also had these different kind of houses. They looked liberal houses. <laughs> temporary. They didn't look like houses that were custom in Virginia. So it was a bit of a of time to get people you know, people from Chicago who move here to several places. <laughs> yes? Yeah, just to, get, to get, talk about some of the things you mentioned about the racial attitudes back in the day and everything of that nature. Uh, I worked for Xerox. Uh, we were building the training center uh, in Leesburg. We had some issues with the state, as you probably remember. Mm -hmm. And I went down to see one particular person in the legislature. And that person looked at me and he said, son, and his greatest southern dog, son, Commonwealth of Virginia ends in Fredericksburg. <laughs> I said, thank God I live in rest. <laughs> and you laugh, but there's proof of what that man says is true. Because if you go down 95, you only get a welcome to Virginia sign when you get to Fredericksburg. <laughs> I have a question. Um, you showed the picture of the house. I believe it's the, the Bowman House, the one that's across yes. Reston Parkway from the Spectrum Center. Right. Um, do you know when that house was built and if it was built by enslaved persons? It, it was built by the Sort of the Bowman family. And that would have been like 40 years or something. It doesn't go back. It's 
does go back that far. Much further than that. Well, I'll tell you, yes, yes. When, when did you first serve in the legislature? <laughs> Was it 18, 18, 12? <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. We're talking about the 60s and 70s. I went to the legislature first in 1978. And it was because of Mike the people who arrested me. <laughs> got me there. I had a similar story experience. I quite frankly went up all out. My first reason for buying it was in that period of time, Gulf Preston was building some uh, subdivisions of some communities with really economical, low cost housing. And I got a deal. Because at that time, I hadn't really decided what I was going to be doing in terms of running for office. But then I, when I discovered who lived here, I said, Thank you, Lord. You send me to the promised land. <laughs>
and this is a great story. It's been told in different formats and so on, but it's still, I think, available for much more scholarly uh, study than has been put into it. Obviously, for a 45-minute presentation, you can perhaps give and jump along the way. But at least that's the front-end way of the way that we got started. So, shall we break and gather around?